The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Why, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Ron Chuck and welcome to the program for this 31st day of July, 2023. We are right down to brass tacks in our 2001 replay. It's a Focusing primarily now on National League games, specifically the National League East. We'll show you the standings between the th innings in the fourth, and pretty much it's all said and done. I just don't see the Red Sox catching the Yankees. The White Sox are probably going to win the American League Central, and we know Seattle and Oakland, regardless of what order they finish in, are in the playoffs. More and more every day, like Seattle is going to win the division, and Oakland is going to go to or be the wild card right now most of the drama is in the national league east hard to believe six races and and all that the phillies lead the marlins are in second and the braves who a commenter said ah this replay is not doing the braves any favors and no they're not they are 76 and 75 coming into this one and this will be the last wednesday of the season if 9 11 hadn't happened so these are the games of september 26th 2001. So it'll be A.J. Burnett for the Marlins, who are 79 and 72. This is game 152 for Florida. They have 10 left. This is also game 162 for Atlanta. They have 10 left. They're going to go with Jason Marquis against A.J. Burnett. The Braves really need to get past the Marlins to have a shot. And the Phillies are sitting pretty. Welcome to the pennant chase, right here, right now. As Retro Sports Network proudly presents, 2001 in the 2001 in Action PC Season Odyssey tonight from Pro Player Stadium in Cor Coral Gables or Miami, Florida. It is the Florida Marlins and the Atlanta Braves. And tonight's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web. For your sports simulation and replay needs, find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are sold. Or listed for that matter. I'm just discombobulated today. AJ Burnett gets the call for Florida. Hi, right, good morning, Bernie. A.J. is somehow going to squeeze in three more starts after this over the next 10 days. He is 12-7, and seven, a 3.92 ERA. He's 24 years old, curveball at 90, and a standard pitcher. Having a good year. He last pitched against the Phillies September 21st, so on five days rest. And he didn't pitch all that well his last time out. A 12-4 loss, 6 innings, 97 pitches, 5 hits, 4 runs, all earned. A home run, he walked 3 and struck out 5. Against the Braves, he's only made the one start, and that was an 8-inning win. So overall for A.J., 156 innings, 135 hits, 76 runs, 68 of those earned. 15 homers, he's walked 65 and struck out 123. It'll be the Astros and the Cubs to, are Wednesday at noon. And then Thursday will be a doubleheader day on Retro Sports Network, 1130 Eastern. Again, Astros and Cubs from Chicago and a meaningful NL East game. The Cubs are in the driver's seat for the wild card. They're not they're about to get eliminated for the division, but their playoff fate is still in their own hands. Here's a lineup that Atlanta will send out. Keith Lockhart at second will lead off. Davey Martinez at first will bat second. And a Chipper Jones at third bats third. Brian Jordan in right cleans up. BJ Surhoff at left will bat fifth. Andrew Jones in center going sixth. Javi Lopez behind the plate, bats seventh. Mark DeRosa at short goes eighth. And Jason Fluff DeMarquis will bat ninth and throw about 95 pitches. Again, 
Right now for Atlanta, it's all must-win games. Cliff Floyd is a 6-4 and a four as we set Florida's defense for you. Preston Wilson, a 5 and an 8 in center. Kevin Millar, a 2 and a 5 in right. Mike Lola, 4 at third. Alex Gonzalez, a 5 at short. Berg is a 5 at second. And Derek Lee, a 7 at first. Charles Johnson, an 8 behind the plate with a 6 arm. And A.J. Burnett, a 7 range and a 950 fielding percentage. Lockhart stepping in on a warm night here in Florida. 80 degrees. Clear skies and easy breezy winds at five from right to left. Keith at 174, two homers, and 11 RBI. And there's a fly ball to right. Millar will make the catch one out. Brings up Davey Bortitas at 239, two homers, and 14 RBI. The Braves 76 and 75. The Marlins. 79 and 72 games 152 for both teams. Pitch to Dave, draws a walk. Burnett could go about 120 pitches, so if they need him to go nine, he has a decent chance. Chipper Jones at 301, 26 homers and 93 RBI. Burnett lines and fires. Fly ball to right. That should stay in the yard. Millar is there. Makes the catch. And Martinez goes back to first. Brings up Brian Jordan. 286. 15 homers and 67 RBI. There's a line drive to third. Lowell is there. And Mikey will make the play. No runs. No hits. The Braves leave on a runner. After half an inning, Atlanta nothing. Here come the Marlins. So here's Jason Marquis. Jason is 22. Fastball pitcher at 92 and is a standard pitcher. He is making his 15th start. So he's got one more after this. He is 9-6 and six on the replay with a save and an earned run average of 290. His last outing was against the Mets on September 21st, so five days ago. I believe, wasn't that? Yeah, that was the Piazza game. So we had that one for you. He went four and a third that night, 89 pitches, two hits, an unearned run, but he walked six while striking out three. So overall for Jason, 127 and a third, 100 hits, 48 runs, 41 earned, 13 homers, 47 walks, and 103 strikeouts. And this will be the lineup he'll face. It'll be Dave Berg leading off at second for Florida. Derek Lee at first, batting second. Cliff Floyd in left will go third. Preston Wilson cleans up in center. Mike Lowell at third will bat fifth. The Cowboy, Kevin Millar in right, going sixth. Charles Johnson behind the plate, batting seventh. Alex Gonzalez at short goes eighth. And Burnett, who threw 21 pitches in his half of the first, will go ninth. Defensively for the Braves, B.J. Serhoff a four and a four in left. Andrew Jones a ten and a six in center. Brian Jordan is a seven and a nine in right. Chipper Jones a three and third. Mark DeRosa a four at short. Lockhart a three at second. Davey Martinez a four at first. That's not a good defense in Strat or Action PC. Javi Lopez a six and a three behind the plate. Marquis is an eight with a 909 fielding percentage. Berg at 299, a home run and 25 RBI. Marquis starts his effort with a base hit to left center field. So Surhoff cuts it off in the alley, and that's a leadoff single for Florida. Brings up Derek Lee at 271. He has 42 doubles, by the way, 13 homers and 79 RBI. Lee, this should be two. DeRosa on the grass to Lockhart for one over to Martinez, and it is indeed a 6-4-3 DP. Brings up Cliff Floyd. Cliff at 313. 33 homers. 
and 110 RBI. Floyd rips this one in the left center. Andrew Jones cuts it off. Floyd is in the second with his 47th double of the year. So the double play looms large if you're a Braves fan. Tribe fan, how are you? So here's Preston Wilson. Preston at 272, 14 homers, and 73 RBI. Marquee deals. Wilson right back up the box. Jason, third base side, throws to first, and that will retire the side. The Marlins get two hits and leave a runner on. After one, no score. So here is B.J. Serhoff. Andrew Jones and Javi Lopez to follow. B.J. at 259, 13 homers and 55 RBI. Serhoff pops it up. Right side, Berg, one out. Andrew Jones at 256, 36 homers, 87 RBI. When did the Braves' divisional streak end? Pitch to Jones, Andrew up the box, pass Berg, and that's a base hit. So a one out single for Andrew who has 12 steals on the year. Javi Lopez at 272, 19 homers, 61 RBI. Doesn't even sit next to Greg Maddox on the flights. Pitch to Lopez. There goes Jones. A hit and a run was on. Johnson to the screen, doffs the mask, and that is out of play. So the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Burnett's pitch, fly ball, left field, that should stay in the yard. Floyd makes the catch. How you doing, J.T. Dutch? Hope you were well. So two out for Mark DeRosa at 259, four homers, and 20 RBI. Burnett can work from the line now with two out. He does. Struck him out. First for A.J., and now take care of the Braves here in the second. So no runs, a hit, no errors. They leave on one after an inning and a half, no score. So my producer, Tribe Fan, tells me that 2006 is when the division winning streak ended. And in our world, it's going to end about five years early. Unless the Braves pretty much run the table to finish out the regular season. Mikey Lowell will lead off for Florida at 284, 16 homers, and 99 RBI. Marquis starts the second strike three. Fastball on the inside corner on an 0-2, and there's one out for Kevin Millar at 329. What a year for Kevin. 21 homers and 90 RBI. Marquis pitch. Millar in the left center. Jones will make the catch two away. For Charles Johnson, Charles at 227, 15 homers, and 52 RBI. Liner to left, Serhoff will make the catch, and that will retire the side. Marlins in order after two, no score. Yeah, it went from 91 to 2005, JT Dutch tells me. Of course, accepting 94. And that's really on a technicality. Because if there had been a postseason in 94, and a tribe fan and the great minds think alike, the Braves wouldn't have won the East in 94. That was the Expos. And as tribe fan says, although those in La Belle Provence would say that streak started in 95 and not 91. So the Braves won the West, 91, 92, 93, switched to the East, pulled the strike and made sure there was no playoffs and then went on that 10-year or 11-season run from 95 to 05. Jason Marquis at 138. No homers and two RBI. Burnett's pitch. Struck him out. A 2-2 curve. Caught the outside corner. So opening nine for A.J. 44 pitches. Two and a third. 
A hit, a walk, and two strikeouts. Lockhart is 0 for 1. Got him! So we got a good morning and a good afternoon. As Lockhart swung on and missed a 1 2 fastball. So here's Dave Martinez, who walked his first time up. Burnett winds and fires. Ground ball to Berg. Dave throws it to first, and that will retire the side. Braves go in order here in the third. After two and a half, it's the Marlins and Braves. Knotted at zero. That, well, okay, and so JT Dutch brings up. The Braves were down six with about 50 to go, and the strike hit 94. Would have been tough, but not insurmountable. But that Expo team was pretty good. Alex Gonzalez is also pretty good. 249, 16 homers, and 71 RBI. Marquis starts the third, fly ball to center. Jones will make the catch. One out for A.J. Burnett, hitting 136, and that's better than he did in real life. A double and two RBI. Then again, wasn't it Cincinnati in 81 tried to claim that they were the NL West champions on opening day of 82? The, the Six teams that could claim goodness in, in 81. Two of them didn't make the playoffs, St. Louis and Cincinnati. But I think at the end, they had the best records in the division. Of course, that was the split season. Montreal and Philly in the east, and the Dodgers and the Astros in the west. Pitch to Burnett. Struck him out. A 1-2 fastball looking to away. So Marquis, 29 pitches for two and two-thirds, nine batters, two hits, and two strikeouts. Yep, yeah, they made the, the Reds made the banner MLB best record in 1981. That and about 350 gets you a venti at Starbucks. Berg single to start the ball game for Florida. That's true, and that's why we don't do split seasons. Never mind, the Dodgers could have gone 0-53 in the second half and still made the playoffs. A lot of incentive if you've already won the division, right? <laughs> Pitch to Berg. Struck him out. So Marquis is fan three. He got him to swing and miss at that. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the fourth here at Pro Player. No score. So Chipper, Brian Jordan, and B.J. Sir hop to face Burnett. Chipper is 0 for 1. Ground ball to third. Lowell in on the grass. Snap throw to first. And Chipper is out on a bang banger. So a good throw by Lowell. One out for Jordan, who's 0 for 1. Braves have been held to one hit. Burnett's pitch. And Jordan's going to reach. It was swung on and missed. Burnett had the strikeout, but Johnson couldn't find it. And by the time he did, almost on the grass behind the plate, Jordan moseyed on down to first. So it's a pass ball and a strikeout. So that's four for AJ, but he didn't get the out. Here's Sirhoff, who's 0 for 1. No incentive to win the second half, as JT Dutch correctly says, if you've won the first. Would not have meant an auto berth into the LCS, who played that league divisional series. And it obviously in 81 worked for the Dodgers. If they had gone 0 and 53 in the second half, they beat the Astros in five tough games. And Blue Monday. Got him into the World Series, and I won a dollar on that against the Yankees, by the way. How you doing, Go Sox? Sir Hoff in the right center. Wilson goes back, makes the catch, and Jordan goes back to first. To be fair, in the American League, it was the Brewers and Yankees in the East and the Royals and the A's in the West with the Yankees beating the A's to go to the World Series. Andrew Jones 
has the Lone Braves hit. That was a single. Jordan on first. Jones strikes out. So the drop strike three really doesn't matter in the end. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom of the fourth, no score. Yeah, no, I think I said that. The Cardinals ended up winning the NL East outright, but because they didn't have the best record in either half, was Montreal and Philadelphia. Okay, so here are the standings. How you doing, Scotty? The Phillies lead the Marlins by two. The magic number is 10. Atlanta is five back. Houston, who you'll see Wednesday in Chicago, leads by eight. We don't think that Houston's going to blow that. At the moment, Chicago has the best record for the wild card. In the West, San Francisco leads Arizona by six and a half. We at this point think that San Francisco will win that division. L.A., Arizona, St. Louis, Chicago, Florida, and Atlanta are all fighting for one spot. In the American League East, the Yankees lead the Red Sox by a game and a half. I think just by attrition, the Yankees will win it. In the Central, the White Sox are going to be the surprise team. They're 94-57. and 57. And they lead the Indians by seven and a half. Their magic number is four. Yep, and Seattle has won 103. They lead Oakland by five and a half. Both of those teams are in the playoffs. And so if the season ended today, the Mariners would host the Yankees. And Chicago and Oakland would be the other series. In the National League... The best record right now is Houston. And so if it's not Chicago, they would host the wild card. If it is Chicago, the Cubs would go to San Francisco. And San Francisco and Philly or Houston Philly would be the other series. So Wednesday's game, the Astros and the Cubs from Wrigley and then Friday it's a double or Thursday it's a double header Houston Chicago and the most meaningful National League East game I don't think the Sox are going to be on again Bernie they were tied when I quick sim this morning and they fell the game and a half back Derek Lee Grounded into a double play his first time up. Marquee deals. Fly ball, left field. Surhoff goes back, makes the catch, one out. That's the problem with six divisions instead of four is you got it. We'll see. The Red Sox and Yankees are done playing each other. Cliff Floyd doubled his first time up. But no one has scored yet in this game. Struck him out. A 1-2 fastball in there at the knees. And that's 4 for Marquis. 2 out for Wilson. Preston is 0 for 1. Got him. So Marquis dealing here in the 4th. Got him to chase a fastball. No runs, no hits, no errors. After 4, no score. Yeah, Atlanta for the longest time was under 500. And so the fact that they battled back just to make this a race. But now it's a five-team battle royale with ten days to go for one spot. The two American League races, or all three American League races, two of them just don't matter. If you don't finish first, you're not going. And the, obviously the reverse is Seattle and Oakland. They're both going. Javi Lopez is 0 for 1. Yep, amazing. In real life, the A's won 102 and ended up 14 out. 116 wins is insane. Oakland has won 97, and Seattle has won 103. I don't know if Seattle can win 116, but Oakland is going to be a 100-win wild card. Theoretically... Houston can win 100, but they'd have to run the table.
Lopez is 0 for 1. Starts the fifth base hit left field. So only the second hit for Atlanta. The Braves have stranded three. The Marlins won. Here's DeRosa. Mark struck out his first time up. Burnett from the stretch. One of the rare times today he's done it. In the center, Wilson will get there. Make the catch. So here's Marquis. He's 0 for 1. Lee and Lowell play for the bunt. And it's fouled back behind the plate, and the count is 0 and 2. They play back with two strikes. Um, well, yes, we've had a, a bunch of low scoring games, and I think that's more noticeable, JT, because it is such an offensive era. But the executive producer of Retro Sports Network does cherry pick games with good teams. And there was good pitching. I mean, I know at the time it seemed like there was a lot of offense. And if you go back through and watch some of the games on YouTube, we've had our, our share of pinball. But good pitching is good pitching. Jason Marquis, line drive to Gonzalez, and Lopez Camper is back to the bag. Here's Lockhart. He's 0 for 2 in the strikeout. A.J. threw 18 batters, 4 and 2 thirds, 83 pitches, 2 hits, a walk, and 5 strikeouts. Tribe fan says little things that make you happy, okay? For those that aren't playing the Immaculate Grid every day, it's real fun. It's got 9 out of 9. It is fun. I got to make sure that I can't look on Facebook beforehand. Guardians, Cubs, and MVP are the left or right and top to bottom being the Phillies, A's, and 3,000 hits. I usually get about five or six. I don't do well with the expansion teams. Pitch to Lockhart. Fly ball, left center field, Wilson. And that will do it. Halfway home on a rainy day in Burlington. No score. you doing this late, you haven't missed a heck of a lot. It's a pitcher's duel. Jason Marquis, a two-hitter, and his fan five through four. A.J. Burnett is allowed two hits through five, walked one and struck out five. Yeah, that was fun, the hole in one I had at Doral, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, 13th in between clubs, and it just rolled right in. It'll be Mikey Lowell over one with a strikeout. Get back to the golf streaming once the playoffs are done. I will say this, and Bernie's going to pick up his ears. If the Red Sox somehow win the division, we will do every game of that Red Sox Seattle series. If the Red Sox don't make the playoffs, then we'll do what we had planned to do, which is everybody's game one and then pick it up. Um, but you'd have guessed it was a five wood as opposed to a five iron. And the SG doesn't give you a five wood. You get a you get a um, a driver, a three wood, and then a two iron. Action PC, you can choose your clubs. I love playing with a one iron. Mike Lowell struck out his first time up. One of five by Marquis. Make it six. He got him looking on a one two fastball. So here's Millar. Kevin is 0 for 1. Marquis pitch. Base hit right field. Jordan will pick it up. And Millar will hold it first with a single. Here's Charles Johnson. He's 0 for 1. 
Yeah, another hole. I was trying to think of Jamie if if because I can't remember everything I've gamed. Whether it was my card that had one last, I've had them before. If I've holding one with myself or with other people and talked about it, this one was me. And they're always unexpected in that game. Pitch to Johnson. Charles, ground ball to first. Martinez to DeRosa for one. And Johnson's going to get on. There's no throw. Have I ever done any dead ball seasons? No, and you're never going to see me do one. Gonzalez is 0 for 1. Johnson on first. Two out, bottom of the fifth. Ground ball to third. Jones over to Lockhart, and they'll get the force there. 5 4. No runs, a hit, no errors. We go to the sixth, no score. Davy Martinez is 0 for 1 with a walk as we start the sixth. Martinez, Chipper, and Brian Jordan here to face Burnett. He's throwing a two hitter. Ground ball, Burnett, first base side on the grass over to Lee, one out. Chipper Jones is 0 for 2. Ground second verse, same as the first, but Burnett couldn't get out of his glove in time, and Chipper beat it out for a single. So that's the third hit for the brain. Brian Jordan is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. There are two things you'll never see me do on my channel. Dead ball baseball and mid-70s NFL football. Nineteen twelve is a good year. I mean, 1908, I think, is the pony year. You got races in both leagues. Brian is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. But the very nature of how we do these, I, I don't think I could do 78 dead ball games. There's a line drive left center field. That's going to drop in for Wilson. Jones is going to go to third. I think Preston got a late jump on it. And Chipper apparently had his oatmeal. Surhoff is 0 for 2. Runners on the corners, one out. Jamie likes dead ball, but for me, the 30s are the de decade that I've yet to have any interest in doing. 20s as well. 38 forward. 38 is an intriguing year for the Red Sox. They're not that good yet. But they have Lefty Grove. They have Jimmy Fox with his 50 homers. And that Yankee team is incredible. But really, right around the war is when I start to develop an interest but 49 did not stream all that well. Runners going. There goes Jordan on a hit and a run. And it's popped up. Berg makes the catch. Two out. Here's Andrew Jones. Andrew one for two. A single and a strikeout. Right back to Burnett. Throws over to Lee. And this time he'll make the chance to retire the side. The Braves remain off the board. No runs, two hits. They've left on six overall. After five and a half, no score. Not well in viewers per 49. I find it because we don't do a single team and just kind of do game of the week that people just don't know the players no matter how well we present them. A.J. Burnett, by the way, is struck out. He's 0 for 1. Marquis starts the sixth, right back to Jason, third base side, over to first. One out. In the dead ball, Bernie says every inning is played like the ninth. I knew nothing about the era. Yep, nope, at this point, good for you. It's in, because the Red Sox are a good team. You know, when Dave did the Spiders, they were so comically bad. That you couldn't help but watch. And the truth and the 1912 Red Sox are really good. Here's Berg, one for two with a strikeout.
right back to Marquis over to Martinez, and Berg is retired. So, 19 batters deep. Marquis, 69 pitches, five and two thirds, three hits, and six strikeouts. Lee is 0 for 2. 41 is intriguing because it's the last year, and I can't imagine anyone trying to come close with, with DiMaggio. I've thought about doing 41 on the channel. So many great names. Ball four. So Lee draws the two-out walk. First walk by Marquis, by the way. Here's Floyd. Cliff is one for two with a double. I enjoyed 49. There's a ground ball, Lockhart. Keith goes to Martinez, and that will retire the side. We played six here at Pro Player. No runs, no hits, no errors, and no score. It is fun discovering the, the oddball era I like in sports. And Bernie's going to roll his eyes at this. Burnett probably in his last inning, by the way, as we start the seventh. Bobby Lopez one for two. His 60s NBA basketball. Where you shoot a foul shot on every foul, except for offensive. Oh my goodness, that must have been brutal to watch. Yep. Tommy Heinsohn. 61-62. Yeah, four, 49 is fun. Uh, Daniel Evanson, Replay Baseball Journal, is doing that. He's also doing 19-8. Line drive, left field, base hit. Gonzalez will get the cutoff throw, and here's DeRosa. Mark is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Burnett's pitch. Fly ball to left. Back goes Floyd. That ball is well struck, and that ball is out of here. And it's 2-0 Atlanta in a game they desperately need. Here it is again. Burnett coming to the end of his outing, and DeRosa just slammed that one in. Yep, one-shot fouls are the strategy move in the 60s. At 49, there's a good mix of players. I'm starting to move forward. Good races in both leagues. And, yeah, you know, one at a time, I just don't think I would enjoy playing... 90 times whatever in one in the dead ball era. I don't have much of a connection with the players. Marquis is 0 for 2, by the way, with a strikeout. Burnett struck him out. That's 6 for AJ, 1 away. A late called strike 3. So the Braves are up 2 nothing. Burnett through 27 batters, 123 pitches, 6 and a third, 6 hits. A home run a moment ago to DeRosa. A walk and six strikeouts. Lockhart is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Burnett deals. Round ball to first. Lee makes it play for the out two away. Now, as far as old-timey golf is concerned, and yet yeah, don't forget I'm managing as I'm playing these two. Sometimes I forget. I had that the other day. Why didn't the computer pinch it for the pitcher? Because you dummy with the computer. Oh, okay. Here's Davey Martinez. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. When the golf resumes, I might just play the old-fashioned tour, the old old Tom and the young Tom. Those are, those are fun. Bob Ferguson. Go look up his picture. Pitch to Martinez. Davies sends this one into right center. Wilson will move over. 
and that will retire the side. Two runs, however, on the big home run by Mark DeRosa. Does it save the brave season? Stretch time, 2 nothing Atlanta. Sixty four and sixty seven are good years. Sixty eight would put me to sleep. Here's Preston Wilson who's over two with the strikeout. Sixty four are good races in both leagues. The White Sox, the Twins, the Yankees, and the Orioles are all good. Jamie says when I read the book The Glory of Their Times, it sent you down a dead ball era rabbit hole about twenty years ago. There was no dead ball for Diamond Mine, so you created the nineteen twelve season. You ended up with a repeat of the Red Sox and the New York Giants. Beatles eternally, of course, is the godfather of dead ball. And Dave Gardner likes dead ball seasons because he, he likes to manage in that way. Pitch to Wilson. Preston, line drive to third. Chippers there, one out. So Marquis probably is going to have to give way to the bullpen. He's at 80 pitches. He's supposed to throw 95. Scotty's playing History Maker Golf with their Pioneer set. I think ASG's runs through 1940. So I don't think it's Hogan and Nelson and all that. But yeah. you man, I just love looking at, you know, the Walter Hagens and the Francis Wiemets with modern clubs. <laughs> Lowell has struck out twice. He's 0 for 2. Line drive past Lockhart. For a base hit. So that's the fourth hit for the Marlins. Here's Millar, who is one for two with a single. So Marquis trying to close, hold on to a 2 nothing lead here in the bottom of the seventh. Struck him out. And that'll do it for Marquis. Steve Carsey coming into pitch. We got a pitching change this game. Coming to you from Pro Player. In Miami. Carse, 34th appearance. Oh, a lot of threes here. Three and three the record. Three saves and a 441 ERA. Against the Marlins, he's gone twice now and only faced one batter, but got a win. He pitched last night and got the win in the 2-1 ball game. On four pitches, 32 and two-thirds, 39 hits, 17 runs, 16 of them earned, two homers. He's walked 12 and struck out 21. He's 29, fastball pitcher at 94, and a ground ball plus-plus pitcher. Charles Johnson is 0 for 2. Yeah, Hagen is fun to play. Ralph Goodall is, too. And Bernie's been doing this old shelf wonderful worlds of golf, and those are fun to watch too. The 90 series is pretty good as well, with Jack Whittaker and Dave Barr calling it. Pitch to Johnson, there goes Lowell, struck him out. So Carse does his job. We go to the eighth. The Marlins get a hit and leave him on. It's 2 0 Atlanta. So who's going to get a one-inning call here? We go switchy righty-lefty. Well, you can pitch. Third straight ball game for Vic Derensborg. Vic, fifth, 60th appearance. Three and one, four saves, a 2-2-60 ERA. He's a lefty. 30 years old. Curveball, fastball, 84, and a standard pitcher. Ralph Goodall really was the pro at Bremer in Los Angeles when you belonged there in the 1980s. Wow. Derensburg has pitched. To, this will be the third game, night in a row he's gone. The Marlins beat the Braves on Monday. Lost last night 2-1, two two-thirds of an inning. 
13 pitches, a hit, a home run, so the run was earned. A solo shot and struck out two. Overall, 63 and two-thirds, 64 hits, 18 runs, 16 earned, three homers. He's walked nine while striking out 52. Chipper is one for three with a single. Slow ground ball down the lead. Derek will underhand it to the pitcher covering, and there is one out. Is Brian Jordan. Brian, one for three. He has singled and struck out. Gone. Oh, my goodness. He popped that off the scoreboard in left center field. That was a curveball that hung like John Holmes. Oh, my goodness. An absolute no doubter. Bernie, at my age, we've lived through the history books. It's not just you. So, 3 nothing Atlanta. Here's Sirhoff. BJ is 0 for 3. Darren's board from the wind. Ground ball to Lee. Derek takes to the bag himself. Two out. You could have hung your hat and coat on that one. My goodness. Tribe fan says the name the name John Holmes is definitely not a name you will hear on a Fortnite stream. And if you hear about Ron Jeremy, just ignore it. Yeah, ever imagine Bertie talking, I mean, uh, Vinny talking about porn stars? Yeah. <laughs> Here's Andrew Jones. Andrew's one for three. He has singled and struck out. There's a ground ball base at left side. I think that homer might have saved the brave season for now. They are rooting for that in Philadelphia for sure. If only someone could have convinced Uncle Vinny to say the words Fortnite. Because when Vinny worked for NBC and there was the Fortnite spelled N I G H T at Wimbledon, that was all Dick Enberg, oh my, but not me. I only did baseball at NBC during baseball season. And poor Lee Trevino never came to visit me and Joe Garagiola, no matter where we were, for Game of the Week. Someone tweeted for Vin a lot, and those were funny. Javi Lopez is two for three. Javi has singled twice and scored a run. Jones, Andrew Jones on first. Braves are now up 3 nothing. Got him! But the damage has been done. A run on two hits and no errors. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's 3 nothing Atlanta. Vinny, a couple years, hosted the Rose Bowl Parade with Elizabeth Montgomery on ABC into the narration of a 60s sitcom but was on Nick at Night years ago. Odd hearing him setting up the scenes. So that Andorra is at it again. Will Darren get a cup of tea? Or something even worse besides his mother-in-law? Gonzalez, by the way, is 0 for 2. Pitch from Carsey. Ground ball, right side, base hit. Oh, that's Samantha. She's trying to get him out of trouble again with Mr. Tate. Pinch hitter. Let's see, righty. Who can hit a righty? Louis Castillo will come in there. Castillo is a pinch hitter, does have an RBI, but not a hit. Overall, 238, 10 triples, and 40 RBI. Yep, a few years ago, Vinny was the Rose Bowl Grand Marshal. Just the once? 
And those are on display now at Dodger Stadium. Willie Mays was on Bewitch. Turns out he was a, well, he'd be a warlock, Jamie, not a witch. And that is how he made those incredible catches. He just winkled his nose, and the ball went right into his glove. Why have you got me doing Vinny? It's an Atlanta Marlins game. Scotty says, Bernie, when I go to trivia, it's not that I know stuff. It's that I remember stuff sometimes. Pitch to Castillo. Struck him out. Carse got him. One out. He swung on and missed a 1-2 fastball. And here's Berg. Dave is one for three with a strikeout. Long drive, left field, back goes Serhoff, and it's a one-run game. So Dave Berg probably saved himself in the ball game because he just smashed a home run in the left center. And Jose Cabrera is going to come in to pitch. What do you mean he's got Skip Carey taken care of? See, Skip is almost Kermit. And your Atlanta Braves need your support. So here is the Berg homer to make this a one-run game. And they're kind of glum now in both Atlanta and Philadelphia because this is now winnable for the Marlins. So as Derek Lee comes in, Jose Cabrera, 59th appearance, 6-2, 3 saves, and a 2.85 ERA, 29 years old, fastball at 92, and a standard pitcher. He pitched two nights ago in Florida's 5-3 win, two-thirds of an inning, 10 pitches, and a strikeout. Overall, 53 and two-thirds, 35 hits. 20 runs, 17 earned, two homers allowed. He's walked 18 and struck out 38. And he is not in for the save for, because the pitcher spot is second for the Braves in the ninth. Lee is 0 for 2. He has grounded into a double play and a walk. Yep, his whip is much lower, 9.88, as opposed to 12.98, but his ERA is within three thousandths of a point, or ten hundredths of a point. Lee, base hit, left field, the tying run is on. And so we said when the Braves got up 3-0 that that might have saved their season. And so now, if the Marlins can score or win this game, that might be the Braves season in 76 and 76. Here's Floyd. Cliff has doubled his 47th. He is one for three, and he has struck out. Bernie remembers going to Fenway when the center field flagpole was still exposed. One day, Jimmy Pearsall, then with the Indians, got angry with something and sat behind the pole. He's the one that ran backwards for his 100th homer, right? It must have been, I, mean, I don't know if Ghost Sox is still here and how old he is, but it must have been a real hoot in the late 70s watching the White Sox on television or listening on the radio to hear Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall Pitch to Floyd. Cliff bounces this one to DeRosa. Bag himself for one. And there is no throw to first. So Floyd is on. Two out. Remember, it was DeRosa's homer in the top of the eighth that gave the Braves now a 3-2 lead. Made it 3-0 at the time. Here is Preston Wilson. He is 0-3 for 3 with a strikeout. Cabrera. Takes a deep breath and deals. Line drive. Sir Hoff makes a catch. And no, he doesn't. He trapped it. He trapped it. 
He showed the third base umpire the ball. Floyd will hold. Sir Hoff didn't make it. Cabrera is shaking his head. In comes Carrie Leitenberg. A pitching change coming to you from Pro Player Stadium in Florida. Yep, Pearsall was a great color commentator. Yep, um, fifth return to Fenway is done by uh, Harry Carey and Jimmy Pearsall the last year that they worked White Sox games. Couldn't hear those games because you lived in Germany. And the internet wasn't there in the 70s. You had Armed Forces Radio. Carrie Leitenberg, 55th appearance, 3 and 6, 2 saves, and a 3 1 7 ERA. Leitenberg is 30, pitched two nights ago against these Marlins, went an inning in that 5 3 loss. <laughs> that is awesome. Leitenberg went an inning, allowed uh, through 17 pitches, two hits, a run, it was earned. Overall, 48 in the third. 43 hits, 19 runs, 17 earned, 2 homers, 29 walks, and 43 strikeouts. In Fisk's return game to Fenway, he wore a t-shirt JT Touch said that says, Haywood Sullivan sucks. <laughs> so first and second, two out. In a 3-2 Atlanta lead, and they are holding on by the hairs of their chinny-chin-chin. It's Lowell at the plate. Mikey has singled and struck out twice. He's one for three. Ground ball. Pass. Lockhart into center field. Floyd will score. The game is tied. So the Braves had a three-run lead, and it's all gone. For Kevin Millar, who was one for three, a single and a strikeout. Yeah, a two-out rally, and that's why the Marlins are knocking on the door for the playoffs. The only baseball games Go Sox saw on AFN in Berlin was the Bad News Bears with Morris Buttermaker. Jamie, channeling his inner Cisco and Ebert, Says Anthony Perkins playing Pearsall was the second worst performance of a baseball player in a film you ever saw. The worst would be Robert De Niro and bang the drum slowly. So here we go. Millar is one for three. He has singled and struck out. Wilson, the potential go ahead, well, the go ahead run is on second, and Lowell on first, the insurance run. And yep, Sullivan and Buddy LaRue. Ugh, those are days we try not to remember, Bernie. Caused you to move all the way out to the West Coast. So Millar has a chance with a base hit to give Florida the lead. William Bendix is Babe Ruth. Scotty saw that one in the theater. Pitch to Millar. He's hit right center field. Wilson's going to score. You would think Wilson's going to score. And the Marlins go up four to three. All this with two out. The good news is if you're a Brave fan and haven't closed the computer down in disgust is that Florida's bullpen is horrible. But the Braves have coughed up a hairball. And here is Charles Johnson, who is 0 for 3 with the strikeout. So now it's in, it's why you play nine. That's right. Yeah, Rob Dan is in San Francisco, and one of the big reasons why the Giants are going to win that division, I think. Lowell on second, Millar on first, Johnson at the plate. Leitenberg deals. Johnson up the middle, and that's a base hit. Will Lowell run on Andrew Jones? DeRosa should have made the play. Lowell will score, and it's 5-3, Florida.
they will the Braves fans are going to have a few words with Mr. Cook about the AI after this. Here's Alex Gonzalez, one for three, a single to run scored. So first and second again, and now the Marlins have some room. What an inning for Florida. Pitch to Gonzalez. Ground ball to third. Jones goes to Lockhart, but the damage is done. Five runs on seven hits and no errors. We go to the ninth here in Miami. It's the Marlins five, the Braves three. Yep, JT Dutch remembers Haywood having his son Mark behind or catching in front of Rich Gedman in, in the 80s, despite the average that didn't even hit his weight, 170. So Alfonseca with a screaming cat in the background is in the closet, 67th appearance. He is 4-10. and 10. And if you're looking for a silver lining for the Braves, the Dragon Slayer has blown 10 save chances. He's only closed the door 25 times out of 35. And his earned run average is 547. He is 29 years old. He is an extreme ground ball pitcher. And that fastball tops out at 89. Against the Braves, his seventh appearance. He's done well against them. Nine innings, ten hits, three runs all earned. A walk, three strikeouts, 2-0 and oh against the Braves with three saves. So if you're looking at the Atlanta side of the coin, you figure you're due. He did not figure in anything in his appearance on the 24th against the Braves. An inning and a third. Didn't pitch all that well. 31 pitches, two hits, two runs all earned. Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. There you go. So Alfonseca has thrown 74 innings. He's allowed 109 hits, 58 runs, 45 earned, 11 homers, 15 walks, and 32 strikeouts. And... But he's their closer. He also has six fingers on one hand. LeVar Burton is Ron LaFleur. who reserves a mention as worst actors in the movie. Billy Martin was in that movie. Play himself. And not the urinal in Texas. So DeRosa, pitcher, spot, and Lockhart. The Braves now need two to tie and three to go ahead. But they were up 3 nothing in this game. Alfonseca, DeRosa, by the way, his two-run shot in the seventh gave the Braves a 2-0 lead. And Bernard Gilkey is going to pinch hit? Really? Okay. As a pinch hitter, he's hitting 319 with two RBI. Overall, 260 a homer and three RBI. Pitch to Gilkey. Ground ball up the middle. Gonzalez snares it over to Lee. One out. So pitcher spot coming up. Mark and his dad Hayward both had 160 batting averages for the Red Sox. Hayward in 1960 and Mark in 1987. Ken Caminiti will pinch hit for the Braves at 238. Seven homers and 16 RBI. As a pinch hitter, one for five since coming over from the Texas Rangers. One out. The Marlins two outs away from a huge win. Remember, they are right in the thick of this five-team chase for the wild card. Caminiti, line draw, ground ball to Lee, takes it to the bag himself, and the Braves are down to last chance saloon. And it's Keith Lockhart, who was 0 for 4 with the strikeout. Those movies didn't hold up well then, the sports bio movies. Yeah, Mark Fidrick is an interesting story, JT. So here he is. It's Lockhart. Let's see if they leave him in. Digging in against Alfonseca, who could use a 1-2-3 inning. 5-11-0 for the Marlins. 
They've left on six, three, eight, and no for the Braves, and they have left on seven, and their season's just about done if they can't get something going right now. Alfonseca, we're going to wait a minute because Bobby Cox will call back Keith Lockhart and have Marcus Childs come in to pinch hit. As a pinch hitter, he's hitting 200 with an RBI. Overall, 242, seven homers, and 25 RBI. So here we go. Two outs, nobody on. The Marlins trying to slam the door. Alfonseca's pitch. Fly ball, left field. Well hit. Floyd off the wall. So Giles with a two out pinch hit double sends Dave Martinez to the plate as the tying run. Martinez 0 for 3 with a walk. The Braves really trying to salvage the season. Alfonseca takes a deep breath and deals. And there's a ground ball base hit left side. So Giles will do what? Is he going to try and score? Floyd's going to throw to the plate. The throw gets away from Johnson a bit. And Martinez goes to second on the air. So now it's five to four with two outs. Runner on third is the tying run. And now you got Chipper Jones. Who as soon as I can find my mouse. Is going to be given first base. So Brian Jordan, who was two for four, including a home run in the eighth inning. And this one has turned out to be all that in a bag of chips. This game was like an NBA game, Jamie says. Everything happened at the end. So the tying run is on third. The go-ahead run is Chipper Jones. And Al Fonseca has been given the barf bag that Kerry Leitenberg had. Here's the pitch. He's hit left field. Martinez scores. Jordan's on with a double, and we're tied at five. So just like the cat that's not very happy out in the hallway, the Braves have found another life. And now you got B.J. Surhoff. Five five the score. My goodness. So what do you do with Surhoff? Oh yeah, the fishies bullpen Tim is horrible. Yet Sports Center would have led with this game in two thousand one. This would have been an ESPN game in 2001, too. So, lefty, righty, righty. Do you bring in Acevedo? But Acevedo's numbers in, re in this replay have been horrible. Alfonseca looks tired. So Acevedo and his 10.73 ERA come in. Whoever, if Florida makes the playoffs, whoever gets him in the LDS is going to be drooling because I don't think they can close out a game. Acevedo making his 26th appearance over from the Rockies on August 7th, one and three with a 10.73 ERA, 31 years old, fastball at 92, fly ball pitcher. Schrodinger's Braves, are they dead or alive? Well, they're wanted dead or alive. That's what John Bon Jovi told me on the way over to the stadium. Wanted dead or alive. So Acevedo, last pitch, and the Braves lost last night. Or in the Marlins lost last night. In fact, he took the loss. One-third of an inning. 
27 pitches, three hits, a run, it was earning a walk. 26 innings overall since coming over, 36 hits, 34 runs, 31 earned. A homer, he has walked 27 and struck out 14. And yes, John Bon Jovi is much, much, much better than Ron Bon Jovi. So Brian Jordan on second, Chipper Jones on third, in a 2-2 two, two tie. My goodness. Pitch to Sir Hoff. Popped up. Left side. Gonzalez on the grass. And that'll do it. But the Braves have got a reprieve from the governor. At least for now. They get two runs on a number of hits. And we go to the bottom of the ninth, cardiac time in Miami, 5-5 the score. So Steve Reed gets the call, 35 years old. He came over to Atlanta in the John Rocker deal, making his 44th appearance. He is 1-1 one one with a 3.06 ERA. Slider at fastball at 89. And a ground ball plus pitcher, yeah, all with two outs. Two easy outs, as a matter of fact. Reed has not pitched since the weekend. He pitched Sunday against the Mets in New York. A 7-6 win. He went one inning, 13 pitches and two hits. 35 in the third innings. 33. He does look like a young Dennis Franz, doesn't he? If you're familiar with the Twitch streamer and YouTuber Matt Malone, he looks like him, too. 12 runs all earned, two homers, he's walked 17, and struck out 21. Again, who can hit a righty? Lion Thompson will come in to pinch hit. 182 was a pinch hitter, 222 overall. He had two RBI in real life. So Steve Reed trying to get this into extra innings. Gets away from Lopez on strike three to throw down the first in time for the out. So Giles and Sanchez. As we flip around the infield for Atlanta, Sanchez is a seven and Giles is a four. It was Dave Berg's home run in the eighth that started this commotion. He is two for four. He is also singled and struck out. Ground ball to first. Martinez, and we are one out away for some freebie baseball on a Monday. So Derek Lee, one for three, has grounded into a double play and walked. Pitch from Reed. Struck him out. We're going extra. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the 10th in a 5-5 tie. Ricky Bones will come in. Ricky making his 66th appearance is 1 and 7. Two saves, a 5 10 ERA. 32 years old, fastball at 90 and a ground ball pitcher. He has lost his last six game decisions. He pitched against the Phillies on the 22nd over the weekend in a 9 0 loss. Allowed an, or went one inning, 27 pitches, three hits, three runs, two earned, a homer. And a strikeout. He's gone 67 innings, allowed 82 hits, 42 runs, 38 earned. He's given up eight homers. He's walked 31 and struck out 56. Against the Braves, fifth appearance, five innings, five hits, two runs, both earned. He walked three and struck out four in his 0 and 1. Then it's Franz, who we were talking about a moment ago was in all the Blues series, Hill Street, NYPD, and before that, the Bay City Blues, which also had Sharon Stone. 
And JT Dutch is talking about how much he loves Mike Post TV things. Andrew Jones is two for four. He has singled twice and struck out. As we start the 10th, Jones, Lopez, and Sanchez for the Marlins, Floyd, Wilson, and Lowell once we get there. Ricky starts his night with a fly ball left field in the corner. And Don Shula made that catch. The count is one ball and two strikes. Okay, Andrew. Ricky winds and fires. Right back to Ricky, one out. Here's Lopez. Javi is two for four. He is singled twice, struck out, and scored. And Wes Helms is not going to pinch it. Sorry. Ground ball is short. Gonzalez over to Lee. Two out. You can pinch it for Ray Sanchez if you want at 224 and 5 RBI. Nope. Base hit right field. Millar will pick it up. So the winning run, a potential winning run is on for Atlanta. Two out. Sanchez with good speed. And who we pinch hitting? I'm assuming now you'll go with Wes Helms. Julio Franco. Julio is a pinch hitter hitting 400 with an RBI. Overall, 262 and 4 RBI. Helms slammed the bat down. Why would you pinch hit for a guy that was 2 for 4 and had a 299 average in this at bat? Sorry. <laughs> wasn't like Javi was uh, deserving to ride the pine. Sanchez, a threat to steal. You know, you look at that picture, and yeah, Franco was down, you know, trading in his check for, for a 4 by 6 but he's only 39 in that picture, supposedly. They throw to first, and Sanchez is back. So two out, runner on, here in the top of the 10th. Pitch to Julio Franco. It's a fly ball to left, and that is foul. No, it's caught. It was caught by Cliff Floyd. You just couldn't see it. John Smoltz coming in to pitch for the Braves after nine and a half, five, five. Yeah, Franco made his debut in 1912. We will see it in Bernie's replay. <laughs> so John Smoltz now the latest to try to hold on the Brave season. He is 4-4, four and four, 8 saves, 27th appearance, a 506 ERA. No truth to the rumor, JT, that Franco played for the Milwaukee Brewers the first time they were in the National League. Smoltz is 34. Slider at 85 and a ground ball pitcher. I meant the American League back in 1900. Smoltz pitched twice against the Mets over the weekend up in New York. Took the loss on the 22nd. Two and two-thirds. 68 pitches. Six hits. Three runs. All earned. His fourth loss. A walk and three strikeouts. 53 and a third innings for John. 50 hits, 30 runs, all earned. Eight homers, he's walked 10 and struck out 44. Floyd, Wilson, and Lowell. 5-5 five, five the score. The Marlins got five in the eighth to take a 5-3 lead, and the Braves scratched out two against that pen in the ninth. And here we are. Floyd doubled, scored, and struck out. He's one for four. Smoltz got him. Oh, one, two, curveball got him. Looking one out for Preston Wilson. One for four, a run scored, and a strikeout. Yep, Smoltz is a cranky color commentator now. You are invited to get off his lawn on a regular basis. Pitch to Wilson. Struck him out, so a good morning and a good afternoon. Here's Lowell. Mikey is two for four. He has singled twice, driven in his 100th run of the replay, scored, and struck out twice. So Feaster Famine, two singles and two strikeouts for Lowell. Two outs here in the bottom of the 10th. Lowell popped him up, 
Lopez, who, by the way, stays in the ball game, goes back to the screen and gets another life. So the count is full to Lowell. Smoltz deals. Ground ball to third. Chipper has got it across the way to Martinez. And that will retire the side. We have played 10 here in Florida. It's the Braves 5, the Marlins 5. So Giles, Martinez, and Chipper Jones to face Ricky Bones. Giles has a double and a run score. That came in the ninth. Fly ball, left field, well struck. Floyd off the wall. So Giles is in the second. He's going for third. The throw down to Lowell, and Marcus has a triple. Oh, my goodness. So the Braves have the go-ahead run on with nobody out for Dave Martinez. Everybody playing in. Yep, Jamie, this might be one of those games you switch off when it's 5-3 in the ninth, and an hour later, you find they're still playing. We've had a lot of everything tonight, JT. A triple to the left off that scoreboard out there, which protects the old football bleacher seats. Playing in. Base hit right center field. The Braves go up 6-5. to five. Wilson has it. Martinez is digging for third. Gonzalez, he throws to Lowell. And Davey, it's back-to-back -back triples. And there's still nobody out. My goodness. So who you got? Who can throw for a bit? The Marlins bring in Josh Beckett. You, that dead ball baseball for sure. Beckett will make two more starts, but he's not going to pitch again for four days. So you got him right now. He is 21 years old. Curveball at, and the fastball tops out at 92. 1-0 with a 138 ERA. He's on a week's rest. 7-2 win up in Montreal. Six and a third innings. 101 pitches. Four hits. A solo homer and nine strikeouts. 13 innings. Eight hits. Two runs. The, both of the runs have come on homers. He has walked two and struck out 15. 434 out in right center. That's a, just... I mean left center. It's 404 to center. It was the last purposely built cookie cutter park. Although the Rockies and Broncos shared a park. Coors Field was under construction. That was always supposed to be temporary. Here's Chipper Jones. He is one for four, runner on third, following the back to back triples. Struck him out. Now, Jordan, who's three for five with a homer and two RBI, gets the intentional walk. And you send up the double play for BJ Serhoff, who is 0 for five. Six five Braves, top of the 11th, one out. Beckett gets his sign. Struck him out. A uh, 2 2 curveball got him looking. So here's Andrew Jones. He is 2 for 5. He has singled twice and struck out. And after a rocky start for the Marlins in this inning, Beckett has fanned both of the outs he's had. No one has made good contact yet. Pitch to Jones. Good night. Beckett strikes out the side. But the Braves pull ahead on one run. 
two hits and no errors. Bottom of the 11th coming up 6-5 Atlanta. Yep, Mile High had the left field stand sitting on water so they can move them. At RFK and Shea and Fulton County, they were on railroad tracks. So Millar, Johnson, and Gonzalez. Kevin is two for four, has singled twice, driven in his 91st, and struck out. Smoltz pitched well in the 10th. Got him! That's three for John. A 1-2 fastball swung on and missed. Charles Johnson, one for four. A single, an RBI, and a strikeout. And remember, momentum only carries you till tomorrow night. Ground ball to third. Jones over to Martinez. And it's last chance saloon time for Florida. For Alex Gonzalez who was one for four. A single and a run scored. Yeah, the, 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 the Cracker Jack old-timer games, those are fun. So can, is there anyone left that can hit a righty? That actually has power. Jeff Abbott has the best batting average against Smoltz. And they'll try it. Abbott will pinch hit. 130 is a pinch hitter. 259 overall and 3 RBI. Pitcher spot due up. Atlanta one out of ways. John Smoltz looking for his fifth win of the year. Pitch up the middle. Sanchez a diving stop. Over to first and the Braves win it. Oh my goodness. 6-5 Atlanta. Four hours and 35 fake minutes. An instant classic at Joe Robbie. Six runs, 14 hits for Atlanta, no errors. They leave on 12. The Marlins, five runs, 11 hits, an error, and they left on six. John Smoltz gets the win. Two innings of three strikeout ball. Jason Marquis did not give up a run in six and two thirds. Four hits, a walk, and seven strikeouts. A.J. Burnett started it for Florida. Seven innings, six hits, two runs, both earned. A home run, a walk, and six strikeouts. And then the Florida bullpen choked it away. What they say was the MVP. I have no idea who to go with here. Brian Jordan's going to get your Digital Life MVP. Yep, Smoltz had plus plus stuff. And they weren't going to get him. So the Braves live to fight one more day. Philly's lead is now two and a half over Florida, and their magic number is nine. The rest of this Wednesday, the 26th, it's Houston at Chicago tomorrow at, New at Tuesday at uh, Wednesday at noon Eastern. Seattle over Texas 4-2. Abbott goes to 12-5. Bell 5-6. Rodriguez 3-4 is 41st with two doubles. Chicago beats Pittsburgh 8-5. Cruz 4-0. Oh. Arroyo 3-9. Brian Giles hits his 31st 3-4. Four. Reds beat the Phillies. So Florida doesn't lose any ground. Atlanta will gain a game. Cincinnati 6-3. Jimmy Rollins, four hits, two RBI, and a triple. Fernandez, 1-0. Randy Wolf falls to 11-7. Montreal beats the Mets 6-3. Graham Lloyd, 5-7. C.J. Nitowski is 0-2. Mike Piazza hits his 30th, 3-5, and drives in three. Tampa beats the Yankees 7-4. Wilson, 11-7. Andy Pettit, 11-8. Red Sox are going to gain a game. Soriano, 2 for 5, is 13th and a stolen base. Red Sox beat the Orioles 7 to 6. Ugi Urbina picks up his first win, 1 and 1. Roberts, 4 and 11. 
Trot Nixon, 35th of the year, 2 for 3 and 2 RBI. St. Louis beats Houston, so Chicago is now 7 back. Daryl Kyle, 12 and 12, alone 4 and 5. Craig Biggio goes 5 for 5 with a double. Kansas City and Extras beat Detroit, 10 9. Reichert, 6 and 9. Anderson falls to 3 and 4. Berger, 2 for 2, is 4th and 2 RBI. The White Sox beat the Twins, 5 2. Kip Well, 6 and 9. Reed, 3 and 3. Durham, 2 for 4, is 21st, drives in 2. San Diego all over Colorado. Their season's done. 11 to 1. Lawrence, 7 and 5. Chacon, 7 and 12. Yeah, the Rays aren't going to lose 100. Be close. Uh, Ryan Klesko, 33rd of the year for San Diego, 1 for 4, and drives in 2. D backs over the Brewers, 3 to 1. Moore, 1 and 2. Sheets, 7 and 13. Collier, 2 for 4 with his third of the year and a stolen base. San Francisco pounds out 17 hits, but the Dodgers win an 11, 11 to 8. Prokopek, 7 and 8. Brewinger, 1 and 2. Galarraga, 3 for 6. His fifth of the year with a double. And last but not least, uh, Anaheim, 7 and 2 over Oakland. Jared Washburn, 13 and 5. Barry Zito, 15 and 6. Darren Erstad is 11, 3 for 4 with a double. Kansas City in that win pounded out 18 hits. All right, the special tomorrow, or the special Wednesday, Houston and Chicago. Friday, or th yeah, Thursday's doubleheader, the games of the 28th. Houston and Chicago will be the first. And at the moment, it's Philadelphia and Florida. And that one looks to be mighty, mighty big. And that's as far as we're going to go with that. So that's the rest of the week for you. Cubs and Astros Wednesday. And Cubs and Astros Thursday to start the doubleheader. Phillies and Marlins, the night cap. I'm Ron Zucker. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you Wednesday. So long, everybody.